All right, so this is uh, my first project with uh, electronics, I guess. Um, most of my other projects have been wood related and didn't require any moving parts. So this is my first project that I kind of want to document and uh, build. And this is the, the pottery wheel. So we'll see how, how all this goes. Um, just want to show the pan as an intro, I guess, because I think that pan is really cool. It's my wish shop. So uh, for the pottery, pottery wheel, I did a lot of uh, research, and um, there are a lot of things online, a lot of people think, a lot of things that people did um, to make uh, their own DIY pottery wheels, and um, I just kind of wrote down some things that uh, that they did, and the things that um, I would like to improve upon. Um, so some of the things that this thing had to have was, um, had, to, had to be waterproof, because um, you're working with pottery and there's a lot of water that gets thrown around. So basically anything above the um, the turning portion uh, of the pottery wheel um, would need to be waterproof. And um, I need to separate that somehow um, from all the electronics and all the spinning bits. Um, I also thought about a uniform platform. Um, that would be the part where it's spinning, the table that's spinning. Um, I would like to use a material that is... Uh, it wouldn't cause any uh, unbalanced uh, weight when I uh, when I put it all together. So something like MDF uh, as as wood, or um, actually what people have been using is Corian, um, which is kind of this um, kitchen cabinet type of material, kitchen countertop, I should say, and it's just this kind of plasticky material that is um, very uniform. And it's also waterproof too, so that's a big plus. Um, then we also want a variable speed, um, and that's where uh, we would like to have some kind of pedal contraption to um, vary, vary, vary the electrical input and the speed of the motor. Um, so this whole project kind of began with uh, an idea of using the uh, an old fan, um, and uh, the, the good thing about the fan was it was a direct drive, and so I kind of wanted to keep this thing as easy as possible and a direct drive which means um, basically a, a straight shaft from the motor to the spinning table so there's no real um, intermediary, intermediary parts um, and that uh, someone did online and they had pretty good success with it but um, after reading some of the comments it, it seemed like um, the fan motor was not powerful enough, didn't have enough torque and so over time, that motor would uh, would burn out, and it would uh, not work as well. So um, I had to dump that idea for a direct drive, unless I could find a much more powerful motor somewhere, um, like a washing machine motor or something like that, to uh, um, to, to to use as, instead of the fan motor. Um, but that would mean I have to go to a junkyard or some some place like that. Um, I also looked at. Um, just buying a, a washing machine motor from Sears, but that was uh, a little too uh, expensive as well. It was a little, a little bit out of the budget. Um, and then the other idea was a belt drive. Um, so the belt drive, um, I kind of didn't like that idea at first because if you think about it, you got a pulley here and a pulley here where the, the motor is. And um, to have that belt drive in there, um, you have to span a certain distance. And over time, belts do uh, create slack. They, they wear, and um, you'll lose connection between these two if you don't design it correctly. Um, I mean, there's a lot of belt-driven things out there, um, a lot of things in car applications and um, things like that. So if I were to design something like this um, from scratch, it, I, I thought that I would probably... It will probably work at the beginning, but it will probably uh, end up not lasting very long. Um, because basically you're taking a belt that um, is intended to perform a certain function and you are um, putting it into another application that it wasn't intended to be designed for. So uh, the belt drive uh, didn't look good at the, at the very beginning. Um, so I, um, I was thinking, well, what else can I do? Um, so then I started looking around my, my shop and I was looking at the tools. Uh, so I've got the mutter saw there. And then I got my bandsaw. Well, that's kind of a belt-driven thing. Um, that's kind of interesting. And then I saw my drill press. Um, that has an internal belt drive system. 
right there and it's got a motor out back and I thought well that's intended the way it's supposed to be designed or is designed the way it's supposed to be intended and um, that would be a pretty easy drop in kind of plug and play <laughs> for a lack of a better term um, that I could use for this uh, for this pottery table um, it's got enough torque um, basically these things are just made to, to keep drilling and um, to, to really have enough uh, power to, to bore those holes out and um, another good thing about it is that this chuck um, is adjustable um, just like any other um, drill and I could uh, basically attach and detach um, whatever uh, shaft I have in there um, for easy assembly disassembly um, so this whole thing is pretty much drop in. You got the motor, you got the belt drive, and you got the the spinning shaft. Um, so I took that idea and uh, basically I got a, uh, a another drill press here, um, basically the cheapest, uh, most powerful one I could find. Um, and uh, I'm going to turn it upside down for this application. So I uh, have it out right here. I'm going to turn it upside down. Um, somehow I need to figure out how to mount this thing to the underside of, of the table. I um, think maybe put some some wood underneath, kind of cradle the whole thing. Um, so we'll see what happens there. So to connect to the chuck, um, basically I had to figure out a way to uh, make a, a drive shaft come out of this thing. So normally what you have is um, a, a drill bit that goes in here. Maybe like... A, a Forstner bit or, or something that can grab onto. The Forstner bit has um, some teeth onto it that it can grab onto another object, uh, possibly a bearing. Um, and I was having a lot of trouble trying to figure out what I can put in this area as a, a drive shaft. Um, as you can see here, I was using a drill bit and maybe an attachable shaft onto that. Um, and yeah, it just didn't work out well. Um, so then I had the idea of um, uh, using a, what you call a hex drill socket dryer. And so what that is, is one end, you have a, a hex end. Sorry, is that a focus there? Hex end. That hex end would go into the chuck. And the chuck has three jaws around it. So those three jaws would grab onto three sides of this, and this would be my my shaft. Um, the other end of this was a uh, a bearing. So this is a uh, a wheel bearing. Um, there was one person online to use this as their um, uh, attachment to the spinning tabletop. It's good that it spins in a plane that's going to be very stable, so it's not going to wobble at all um, and uh, it's really made to be durable in, in that sense so what the person did was he mounted uh, this lower portion onto um, the, the rest of the structure and the top portion to the, the spinning tabletop so in order to make the connection from here to here I thought about using a socket and this was uh, the thing that took me the longest time to figure out is how to make the connection between a bearing that's uh, going to provide a, a good barrier between the, the, the wet portion of the, um, the pottery wheel and the electronic portion, motor portion of, of the, the pottery wheel. So with a socket, I can stick it in here like this um, and uh, glue it into place. Now, um, the person online, what they did was they had basically a machine shop and uh, he could lathe out a, a steel plug that would fit real snugly into there but since I don't have a metal lathe and I don't really want to do uh, metal working I don't have that capability here um, what I'm going to do is I am going to take this and uh, glue it in and online I saw that um, this Loctite epoxy metal concrete version had the, the strongest bond, the strongest hold out of uh, a lot of the other popular brands out there. So I'm going to put some of that into uh, this hole, stick it in here, and center it as much as possible. 
and then this would just pop into here. One main concern of mine with this whole setup is if I don't make this thing straight or if this thing is not straight as well um, when it's spinning it's going to cause uh, wobbling and it might just break apart and that's going to be an issue so we're going to have to figure that one out. Uh socket. Now the socket is supposed to slide into here but as you can see there's a bit of wiggle room in there. So if I make this any angled in any one of these directions this thing when it spins is going to make this thing wobble when I glue it together. So it's really important that I center this socket inside this wheel bearing. Um, so I thought about this for a long, long time, and I'm not sure quite how to do it, but I found this one way that may just do the trick, but it requires a lot of, a lot of eyeballing. So what I noticed was that if you look down the center here, I could see straight through the wheel bearing to the socket. One thing that I found was if I stuck this piece of PVC down into the hole, that PVC finds the center of the socket pretty well, um, basically as well as I could, and I can position this thing, the wheel bearing, centered to the socket this way. And then I'll, I'll have to let the glue uh, sit and set in that direction. And then I'll just remove this as it dries, and hopefully it all works. following um, for the pan that goes around 
the spinning disc part uh, that catches all the water underneath uh, the, the disc. Um, they used a oil pan or one of those uh, oil changing pans that I got from uh, the auto parts store. So they used two of them. Um, so basically you cut off one end um, and make a similar end that I did over here. And you fit it together like so. And in order to do that, or the reason you should do that, is because you can put it around and make it catch the water. And then you can take it apart for cleanup later on. So let me put this together real quick here. So match up the handles there. And it should work. Well, it needs a little bit of a little bit more cutting here. So that's basically the idea. So now it's time to make the the spinning spinning plate portion of the uh, the pottery wheel. Um, right now, I'm trying to make a template, uh, but it's very difficult to to get um, the exact location of those five studs uh, relative to the center. Uh, what I've tried to do was. Uh, mark the top of these studs with um, some black stain that I have um, and I flip the template over upside down and, and just touch the the black just to mark it on here um, unfortunately uh, the the black uh, stain it just bleeds all over the place um, I, I need to find a, a different way to mark right. it so I'm going to use this and I'm going to place it on this piece right here. This is uh, by far the hardest piece that um, I, I could obtain. Uh, so this was a countertop material that I had to go around to a lot of different uh, sink supplier, countertop suppliers, fabricators and ask for a free sample. Uh, it took me a little, little over a week to, to find this going to various different places. But um, there was this one place that uh, gave me a free sample, and um, they were pretty kind. They said, Happy, they said Merry Christmas, and uh, sent me along my way. I didn't have to pay for it, so... holes here to sink the, the nuts down deeper. If you can see there's still a little bit poking out uh, because the nuts are a little bit thicker than the, the accordion material. I also made some clearance holes in the bottom of the top plate. So these would fit in the same spots over here um, but I still need to trim the five studs here. Moment of truth. Pedals all connected. I haven't glued it yet. We'll see if this thing wobbles. So uh, I took it apart. Um, I tightened the belt as much as I could, but it seems like there's just uh, too much friction in there right now. Um, but it seems like uh, maybe over time it will um, loosen up a bit and we'll see if it if see if the belt wears out over time but I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be okay I uh, put the, the base plate on there and as you can see uh, it seems to work pretty well right now not too much wobble it's actually very good I'm pretty surprised of how, how well it's not wobbling right now so I'm going to continue to uh, shave down and make sure that this plate is nice and even. Shaving this uh, 
this plate down and evening out the sides to make this wobble a little less. Uh, I was holding the the rasp or the metal file in my hands like this for a long, long, long time. Um, and uh, you can see all the, the shavings here. What I didn't notice was that the smoter was overheating and all the internals inside here were overheating as well. Um, not sure if it's because uh, these drill presses aren't made to run that long or if this drill press was um, running with, uh, there's too much friction inside so the motor had to overcome all that and it was generating too much heat or it could have been a little bit of both. Um, so basically uh, it was a big spark that came out and it tripped some fuse inside the house and all the, the outlets in the, in the basement are uh, useless now. I can't even use the, the shop vac to uh, clean up anything. So the pottery wheel seems to still be working. Uh, right now I have it all clamped up because uh, the glue is drying. Um, as you can see here, the motor still works, still spinning. Um, there's still a little bit of a wobble going on here because uh, this center shaft is slightly off from the chuck. It's slightly to um, the left here. So I'm going to have to re-drill these holes and, and shift it a little bit. Um, but that shouldn't be too bad. Uh, one good thing uh, about calling an electrician to fix the, the blown fuse um, that this thing caused uh, yesterday was that uh, it was a quick fix and um, he did at the end show me how to rewire some of these lights in here so um, I am able to turn them on and off with the same circuitry as the rest and I, uh, you wouldn't be seeing any more flickering lights um, as my power tools are on. Um, it reminds me of a, a horror movie, and uh, it's a little disconcerting sometimes. But anyway, um, as a safeguard, uh, I did get this uh, plug here. It's called a uh, GFCI plug. Uh, it basically, it's a, a, a mini fuse. And um, just in case uh, this thing does overheat again and um, you know, it doesn't burn the place down, but uh, this thing should uh, should be helping that. And most places have those kinds of plugs um, in the wall. Um, but in case uh, there isn't one, uh, there is this one right here that uh, will help keep things safe. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, this was a, a pretty fun project, and it was very challenging. It fought me all, all along the way, but uh, it was pretty fun. Thanks a lot.